Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Module. This is lesson two from module two. Definition of translation and three basic properties. Okay, classwork exercise one says draw at least three different vectors. Okay, vector. All right, what is a vector? All right, so I'm bringing this in to explain to you what a vector is. So let's take a look at this before we look at the problem. Here's the definition of a vector. A vector is a directed line segment. That is, it is a segment with a direction given by connecting one of its endpoint called the individual point, the initial point or starting point to the other endpoint called the terminal point or the simply the endpoint. It is often represented as an arrow with a tail and a tip. So here are two vectors right here. So let me move this down a little bit now so you don't, okay, so just ignore this up here. These are two vectors. So well, by definition, this point here, A, that's the starting point, which is also called the initial point. The other end point called the terminal point is right here with the arrow. So it starts at A and ends at B or terminates at B. It goes in the direction of the arrow, starting at A, going to B. And the, it has a specific length. Okay, it is often represented as an arrow with a tail and a tip. So this has an arrow and this does not. The length of a vector by definition is the length of its underlying segment. So the length of this vector is simply take away, so what I would say is if I drew a line segment from A to B, like so, then the underlying segment right here is its length from A to B, ignoring that arrow. Arrows usually mean going on forever and ever, but in a vector, it's just telling us the direction that we're moving something and this is how far we're going to move it, if that makes sense to you. It is not a ray, it is a vector. Okay, so visually we discuss, we distinguish a vector from its underlying segment by adding an arrow above the symbol. So it also looks like if we call that ray AB, that's got that arrow above this symbol right here is what they're talking about. Okay, thus if the segment AB, A and B being its endpoints, then the vector will start at A because A was the first letter and its endpoint, its terminal end will be B because that's the second letter, okay? And denoted arrow over top AB. Likewise, the vector with a straight point B, starting point, I'm sorry, starting point of B and an endpoint of A is denoted by BA with an arrow. So notice these are in different orders here, and order does matter. The first letter is our initial point. The second letter is our terminal point. It also says to note that the arrow head on the endpoint of a vector distinguishes it from the starting point. Here, vector AB with the arrow pointing to the right is on the left, and vector BA is on the right. So this is vector AB, uh, initial point A, no arrow, terminal point B, arrow. So the letter that does not have the arrow comes first, the letter with the arrow comes second, and we put the arrow over top. We never write this arrow in the opposite direction. I would not do this, okay? This is not correct, okay? And rather than crossing it out, let me put that back there. If I just named it this way, Okay, I don't want to draw the arrow that way ever. Okay, this is incorrect. So I'm going to leave that there, but I'm just going to say, no, do not do that. What we're going to do is there's a letter A and there is a letter B. And the starting point is my B. So I'm going to write the letter that its initial point starts at. Its initial point or starting point is B and it's going to A. So the arrow's always going to point to the right. The letters are what have to get moved. This is going from A to B. This is going from B to A. Do not change the arrow direction. Change the letter order. Okay. Hopefully that clears things up for you, and we can continue on with this lesson. So we had to talk about vectors before we went any further. Okay.
So let's delete this and let's look at this problem. Now it says draw at least three different vectors and show what the translation of the plane along each vector looks like. Describe what happens to the following figure under each translation. That's a shift using appropriate vocabulary and notation as needed. Okay, so give me a moment here. Okay, so here I've chosen three of these shapes. And what this says to do is draw at least three different vectors. So I drew three vectors. This is a vector, the black arrow. And I copied the black arrow with a red vector, which is the same length. Over here is a black vector and a green vector. And up here is a blue vector and a black vector. The black vector is going to be copied, or the blue is a copy of the black. And if I move the blue vector, then that will tell me how far to move it. So this vector tells me to move the blue object in a distance of the length of the vector in the direction the arrow is pointing. So it says here to follow the figures under a translation, use appropriate vocabulary as needed. So I'm going to move this Pac-Man looking guy with the S and I'm going to move him. So you see how this is moving around? It is connected to the blue vector. The blue vector is a copy of the black vector and the vector tells me to move it in the direction of the, the arrows pointing in the distance of the length of that. So moving S over to here, um, and now that is going to be called, that's an S by the way, that's going to be called S prime or F of S, okay? So that was a shift of this Pac-Man in the, this direction in, for this distance. So now I'm going to do the same with the green one. So this is a cylinder, and this vector is going up and to the right, and I have a copy. The green vector is the same length as the black vector. The black vector is my original. I want to move this shape in this direction in, for that distance. So I'm going to move it. Okay, hang on one second. I lost the top, so let me choose that and this and group them so they all move together okay so now I'm going to move this and notice I'm following that line and I'm moving this vector till I get the initial point of the green the initial end to the terminal end of the black so I moved it the distance of the black in that direction so this cylinder is now over here. It moved up and to the right the same distance as this length is. And then I'm going to take this symbol here that shows, usually that is used to tell someone to turn the page, and I have a black vector and a red vector over it, and I want to move this down and to the right the distance of the length of this vector. So I'm going to grab it and move it down until my initial end Re gets to my terminal end of my vector. So I moved it from here to here, the distance of the length of this vector in that direction. So now this shape U is now U prime or F of U. And this is V prime or F of V. Okay. And there was three translations. So how would we describe those translations? Okay, so the Pac-Man, I would say, this was a translation to the right in the direction of the arrow pointing to the right for the distance of the length of my vector. So basically from A to B. And the same would go for these. This would be up and to the right. This would be down and to the right. Okay, let's move on to the next. Exercise two says the diagram below shows figures and their images under a translation along H I. H I is this vector right here. Notice that this is a line segment with two dots on it. This is an angle. This is a line segment. This is a line segment. And this is an angle. And this is a line segment. This is a point at one end and an arrow at the other. This is our vector. This is our vector. This is our initial point, end point, 
and this is our terminal end. Initial end, terminal end. This tells me to take one of these objects and move it to this direction, that distance. Okay, so let me get rid of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a copy of this. Let me get, and I'll pause the video so you don't have to watch me do it. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is move these three. Obviously, if we're moving down and to the left, the things that are above and to the right are going to be what we're moving. So I am going to group. I'm going to group these together. So now I'm going to move this segment here from my initial point, H, and move the H to I, which is my terminal. So I'm going to start at my initial and I'm going to move down to my terminal, which is a distance of the length of HI in the direction of the arrow that's pointing down at I. And notice what just happened. That green segment that was here moved down to here. So this is F prime and this is C prime. So now it wants me to label these points. Well, if it became F prime, that is the image. The pre-image is the letter. Let me use the right marker color. It's the letter without the prime symbol, F. C prime was originally C. So this point F going to F prime, this is C going to C prime. Okay. So now I'm going to, I now need to ungroup these. Okay, and now group this with Actually, I need to move it back now. It's going to let me ungroup. Ungroup. Okay, so now I need to choose all these pieces. I'll do that with this. Okay, so we've done F and C. That is F prime, C prime. So I guess you see what's going on here now, but I'm still going to go through all of this. So now I want to move this red angle A, B, C, the distance from H to I in that direction. So I'm going to click on this and this, and I'm going to group them so they move together. So they're now grouped. And now I'm going to take that and move it from H all the way down to I so that the dot is right there. And now I is where, or H is now where I is. So I went in this direction, that distance, and this angle landed right here. So A ended up here. So now I'm just going to copy this over. This is now A prime. This is C prime. This is B prime. Okay, so now I'm going to move these back. So my labels stayed where they are. A prime, B prime, C prime came from here. Okay. Okay, and last but not least, I am now going to move my initial point, endpoint to my terminal endpoint by grabbing here, moving it down. Notice the blue line moving with it, line segment, and then I'm gonna stop when H gets to I right there. And now you see that this line segment moved to where it is now. So now I'm going to label that D prime. So now this is going to be E prime because it came from E, which is still up there, and D prime is now going to become D, so that's this point right here. Okay, so now I'm going to move that back, just to show you. Move that back up, and my E prime stayed there. So now I'm just going to delete this. Okay, so now we've labeled everything. F prime came from F, C prime came from C, A went to A prime, B went to B prime, C translated to C prime, I should use the right words, and D, actually that's a B, so let me rewrite that, that's a B, B translated to B prime, and E translated to E prime, all in this direction, this distance. Lesson summary, okay, I'm going to let you read that on your own. That is the end of lesson two. Go to your problem set.